Well, if you're coming down fossil collecting over the Easter weekend, I hope you do really well and have some good luck on the beach at low tide looking for the fossils. You must not dig in the cliffs in situ, that's part of the fossil collecting code of conduct. You'd be absolutely mad to go anywhere near the cliffs. They fall down and they fall down suddenly and without warning. So please do not go anywhere near the cliffs. You'll see people near the cliffs. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to look for fossils because the sea washes the fossils out of the mudslides onto the seashore. The sea needs to do the work on the fossils for you to find them. So now here I've got some identity of the fossils you're looking for on the Jurassic coastline. And I'm going to show you a different lot of fossils here that you may pick up over the days that you're walking along the coast at low tide. So this is a fossil ammonite from the Jurassic. You can see this one here preserved in iron pyrite. They are heavy, the ammonites preserved in iron pyrites. The fool's gold is heavy and it collects in certain pockets on the beach where you can find them. Then also too, as you walk along the Jurassic coast, you might be lucky enough to find quite a few of these guards of the sea creature, the belemnite. You can see there the tail end of the sea creature, the belemnite from the Jurassic age. So part of that creature there, I've got the model of, you can see the plastic model down there. Then also too, you might be able to find some bones of the ichthyosaur, some backbones there of an ichthyosaur. The ichthyosaur grew up to 60 feet, swam as fast as a tuna fish and ate anything that moved back in the Jurassic. You can see some lovely little backbones there from the creature called an ichthyosaur. They're ground down by the attrition of the sand and sea. You can see the sea's done a lot to wear those away. Also bone, when it's been washed around on the beach, you can see the blood vessels there filled with white calcite. It's quite a heavy piece and the bone makes quite a noise when you tap it against a rock rather than some hollow bones that you might find washed out onto the shoreline from the old Victorian bottle dump per se. Then here, I've got a jaw of an ichthyosaur. You can see the gnarled teeth in that jaw socket a rostrum, we call those locally. That's a 190 million year old piece of jawbone, quite thick set. So keep your eyes peeled. The best tools are your eyes as you look along the shoreline for the fossil finds. Then also too from the ichthyosaur, funnily enough, a coprolite. You can see the last meal it ate was a tapedium fish. You can see those black shiny scales wrapped up in that coprolite there. Then fossil wood, monkey puzzle tree, got into the deep sea marine environment, fell to the sea floor and fossilized. You find branches of that material with cones on out along the shoreline. A bit of monkey puzzle tree there. Then a fossil oyster shell would have sat there filter feeding on the sea floor. Devil's toenails, they refer to these with a bit of myth and legend. You can see the oyster shell there. And then also to something you get quite Numerously is the ammonite biscuits, the ones preserved in beef rock, fibrous calcium carbonate. Those little lightweight fossils wash around all the time. Then a bit of the sea lily stem, an animal related to the starfish, the crinoid. There's some of the sea lily stems. The ossicles of that sea creature wash up a lot, especially if you're doing a bit of sieving work on the shoreline. We're more closely related to those than we are jellyfish. That's the crinoid. Then also too, a fossil shell, a little gastropod you can find there on the beach in the deep sea, from the deep sea marine environment they used to be in. A gastropod fossil preserved in limestone. And then some of the right rocks you're looking for are these gray layered limestone rocks with the calcite ammonites in. And some of those particular rocks still have the ammonites preserved in calcite in, and they have that beautiful coloration left on the outside of the shell. Sort of mother of pearl there, you can see. That's a nice find to make. You have to know which rocks to split. You must split the gray layered limestone rocks. 
And if you find anything particularly important, you have to register that over at Charmouth Heritage Centre. And that's the key scientifically important registration scheme code. There is a fossil sponge from the Cretaceous age, flower head sponge, would have sat up on the reef like so. And also too, a fossil sea urchin, a macrasta heart-shaped sea urchin you might be able to spot, just hole on the beach. This one here I've got in some of the flint rock, you can see it's still there in its impression. I'll lift that out and you can see the whole sea urchin there in that rock, the impression the other side, the sea urchin this side. So these are the fossil finds you might find along the shoreline when you're looking. And I'm going to go on now and show you a clip with Mike Harrison and I discussing some of the really good fossil finds from the Jurassic Coast. I've shown you this clip before, but it's a real good one. I'm here with at Mike Harrison's fossils, looking at his amazing fossil finds from the Jurassic Coast, Ichthyosaur jaws, a lovely big backbone of the Ichthyosaur there. And uh, here is Mike himself. There he is, the man himself. And let's talk about some of his fossil finds. Look at that backbone column there. Huge, really weighty, isn't it, Mike? Yeah, four huge vertebrates from a Tenodontosaurus platyodon ichthyosaur I found in 2008. That is big. You can hear it go clonk when it goes back on the table there. Some fossil specimens that Mike's prepared as well, lovingly. Very fragile too. Look at that piece lovely specimen there. This would have been a much bigger piece, um, but unfortunately some of it's got lost to the sea. The sea destroys everything as well as revealing all the fossils. That is looking absolutely amazing on this uh, iPhone. And then some of the harder work here where Mike's had to prepare around the ammonites, preserved in calcite. Wow, those really gleam with the iron pyrites uh, body chambers. And on the other side of the rock, we have imprints of shells and other ammonites. What uh, rock is that? What part of the... This is goldstone. Wow. Quite a rare type of stone really does look gold on the screen too. That's stunning, Mike. Over here, I can see a little fish, a small fish. It's the weather for fish. Just been out fossil collecting in the rain. This is a little, um, little fish in a piece of wood stone, accompanied by some small ammonites, all preserved in calcite. Absolute beautiful preservation, right at the top of the stone as well. What kind of stone was that you found it in? That's a wood stone. That's a wood stone. That actually didn't have any wood in it. No wood in that? No, there was no wood in it, a fish instead. And the little ammonites washed up against it as it acted as a barrier on the seafloor. Amazing. Wow, absolute spectacular fossil finds. I've got a couple of mine strewn in with the others, but uh, Mike's got all the, all the big got pieces. That's one of my favorites of yours. Big Nautilus there from the uh, Lias. Look at that, perfect. Just plucked out of the mud like that. You can find whole specimens on the beach just like that. The sea's eroded that so well, hasn't it? It's sort of given it a sort of sculptural effect. You'll never find another one like it. No, ever, ever. You're right, yeah, exactly. When you talk about this stuff, that is exactly what you're saying. You'll never find some of this material ever again like it. Absolutely unique. Look at that jaw there. It's a lovely toothy rostrum. Wow, what a sword. smile. And did you prepare that one out, Michael? Was that- It um... came out in hundreds of pieces. Oh, proper jigsaw. So painstakingly put it all back together. Um, Look at those gnashes. I suppose the nice thing about the fact that it was broken into so many pieces meant that I could prepare all the matrix from around the teeth oh, so I you see. can actually see through it. To get that three dimensional effect. Look at the light through the other side. If you were a fish, that wouldn't have been such a good thing. <laughs> <laughs> wow. 
This is an amazing collection. Thanks very much for bringing it around. This is Mike from at Mike Harrison's Fossils on Instagram. That's it. I think we've covered all those specimens. What a brilliant display of fossils from the Jurassic coast, mostly found at low tide, washed out by the sea's actions.